Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back! So, we're back to the 2240 again. Um, I've been having a little bit of fun with this gun. Um, I've got a 10 inch barrel on this thing. I took the stock off. I've been working on this thing all morning. Um, I was still not getting speeds that I should technically be getting. So, you know, one of the things we did do is change the back end of the valve and a new stem because we found out both of those were bunged. And um, it helped a little tiny bit, but just not enough for the amount of gas I'm going through. And uh, so I've been playing around with some different stuff this morning with this thing. And uh, I cut the valve uh, front face, the threads, um, about four threads off and put the gun back together. Let's just see, she was running a little too hot for a pistol. Okay, at least in Canada. So back to figuring things out. So I went down to a um, 2240 hammer spring. I am still up there. Not good. I got to keep this thing just under five. So of course we're messing with transfer ports. And it turns out the transfer port I had in there was actually the uh, 3.89 millimeter one that was bored out from a stock. And uh, so I swapped that over, put the stock one back in. I'm still like, I can't believe this. It doesn't matter what's going on. Now I'm over. First time under, now I'm over, right? All for four threads. You know, that's a little bit of extra gas. Okay, a lot of extra gas per shot. But even with the 2240 hammer spring, it's still emptying the entire valve contents per shot. Now, if you know anything about 2240s, it's a hammer piercing assembly. So it pierces the bottle, and then the bottle fills up the valve. You take your shot, and it exhausts it, and then instantly replaces that gas ready for the next shot, right? So when you do fire it, it's a momentary block, so it can't dump your whole bottle, right? And um, anyway, so I got to thinking, well, I still got that 1377 transfer port that won't work in my 1377. It seems to fit this thing. Well, it knocked me back to about 432 feet per second. I'm like, this is not acceptable. So I drilled it out. Um, I figured out how to actually mount it on my drill press. It was crazy because I don't have a lathe. And normally this is best done with a lathe. So I ended up, I bored it out from the little teeny weeny pisser hole, which is very small, by the way, to 730 seconds. And then I thought, well, that's not going to give me much of a gain. So we went to 1 8th. Okay. Now we find out what this gun is going to do with a transfer port that's been drilled out to 1 8th. Okay, so it was originally a, a 1377 detuned transfer port. Now you cannot buy these transfer ports except in the actual gun. So if you needed a new transfer port for any reason for your 1377, they would actually send you a 2240 transfer port. Okay, um, they don't have a Canadian parts list, they never have. Okay, same as when we replace our valves. There's no Canadian valves to be bought. You get sent an American full power valve, which is not a bad thing in a 1377 because even with the detuned transfer port, you're still well under 500 feet per second, but you're a lot closer to it at least. Let's turn the camera around and we're going to fire a couple shots through the crony and we're going to see uh, what a 1 8th transfer port actually does. Um, and if I have to bore it out any further, which... It's going to be real touchy. Now, the stock 2240 transfer ports, by the way, guys, um, are actually drilled at the factory to 930 seconds. So that's like an SAE thing because, of course, these are American guns and, you know, the Americans haven't got on completely with metric stuff, but some stuff, yes. So, um, <laughs> okay, we're all set. Lights are on. Crony's ready. We got one in the chamber. First shot of a fresh bottle. 485. Woo! Okay, I think I did it. I think I finally got where I want to be. 490. Now they're smoking. Okay. Let's give the gun a couple of seconds. We're going to let the, you know, because each shot you take cools things, right? Or it makes them chilly. Now, it's hot out here today. It's about 30 degrees pretty well before the humid X. So it's feeling more like about a lot more than that. Uh, so it's definitely keeping the gas warm. All right, next shot. 488. So we're actually now losing gas. Okay, let's try another one. 492. 
Now with hyper pellets, it's not a big deal with this gun, so I'm not worried about speeds for that. 484. Okay, so we are definitely running 485, we'll say. Well, let's round it out. Let's take another shot. Now remember, we got a stock 2240 hammer spring in this thing. Let me just fire this first. 495, look at that. Okay, so we're still under the 500 with a 14.3 grain Crossman Premier pellet. That's the kind of speeds I was after out of this gun. So now I'm gonna get my best gas usage because I'm running a stock 2240 hammer spring. I have a 1377 Canadian transfer port that I bored out to 1 8th, okay? Uh, by the way, the hole is actually in between a 564, I think it's actually, well I started with 730 seconds, so it's about a 330 second hole is what the actual Canadian transfer port is in the, in the uh, 1377. So even if you want to mod a 1377 uh, to get closer, right? you could just bore the transfer port out, right? Generally, I'm still having issues with my gun, so. Um, so let's go over all the mods to the 2240 right from the start. So what we did to get the gun shooting like this is a stock 2240 hammer spring, a Canadian detuned version 1377 transfer port bored out to 1 8th of an inch, okay? We have a 10 inch barrel on this thing. Of course, custom cut and recrowned by yours truly. And we did the uh, the brass screw recrown on this thing. And man, this thing is deadly accurate now. Um, and of course, um, we have four threads total cut off the face of the valve. Now, if you're new to modding and you have no idea what I'm talking about cutting off the face, let me show you so that you don't go wrong on this one. Now I have a, a valve that was severely modified um, for experimental purposes. Um, but anyways, this thing has three threads cut off. Focus. All right, let's get down here. So this one's got three threads cut off of it um, and it was bored on the inside uh, really deep, okay? Because uh, normally uh, when you hit the fourth thread here, You've got maybe an eighth of an inch before you're right at the face of this thing. And um, so this one was severely overdone. Um, but in order to make use of uh, the valve for this purpose, uh, you'd be kind of like, you'd be jacking up an air rifle is what you'd be doing. Something like with a 24 inch barrel or 18 inch barrel even. Um, doing some severe power mods to an actual rifle class rifle. Usually you don't do that to pistols. Um, but whichever. Anyways, so the threads are what you want to chop off the hacksaw. All you got to do is clamp the, the valve into the vise, and uh, I'll give you a quick preview of what that actually looks like and how to position it. Now, put some, uh, make sure there's no oil left on your face of your valve, by the way. And um, let me just zoomy zoomy for you guys. Okay, so as you can see, this area here is what's clamped into the vise and just snug it up, okay? You can go a little snug, you're not gonna hurt it. And then you wanna put some electrical tape around this area, okay, which is what I had done, okay? And in behind the O-ring, nice and tight. And then chop off about three or four threads, okay? That's all you need to do to this valve. And um, then you clean it up, of course, on the inside with sandpaper and, you know, make sure the insides are clean, spray it off. I actually hosed off the entire front face afterwards really good after I sanded it too with 400 grit sandpaper uh, to make everything smooth inside. Um, I actually did that um, with electrical contact cleaners what I sprayed it with and then I just re-lubed the o-ring with oil and away I went. Now I recommend as far as oil for your air guns, um, if you want to use the Crossman stuff by all means knock yourself silly. I really don't care. Um, but that's, it's your gun, but you can use cross and pellet gun oil. Um, that stuff is notorious for shortening your seal life. Um, which is what I found over the years. Ever since I switched over to SAE 30 non-detergent motor oil. So that's SAE 30 non-detergent motor oil. I've yet to reseal any one of my air guns and they all work flawlessly all the time. So our last reading was 495. Let's drop another one. Now that this thing's been sitting. 493. So we are still well under 500 feet per second. 
with a 14.3 grain pellet, which is lead stuff. We're still in the, actually we're running 490s now. That's actually pretty impressive. So we're in the 490s. That's where I want this gun to be. Okay, it's exactly where I want it to be. Now, the other modification I've done to the gun is I've got a really hairy trigger. So I had a spare uh, 2240 hammer spring kicking around. And uh, I cut it down to length to uh, kind of like compress a little bit, but not a whole lot. And that gives you a real super light trigger. It's not a hair hair trigger, but I would guesstimate maybe between six and eight ounces. Okay, like it's pretty trigger happy. So the gun is working absolutely perfect on where I need it to be for Canadian regulations um, and not having to require a PAL, which is the idea here, or our PAL actually in this case for pistols. Um, you know, so be careful with your modding if you're in Canada. You know, you got to watch those speed limits. It may take you, yeah, you're going to put your gun over 500, but hey, you know what? Don't panic or freak out. Just think things through and uh, watch this video and you'll learn how to actually do it um, and keep it under five. Now, here's one last thing I want to leave you guys with. I'm running a 10-inch barrel, okay, which is mine is custom cut recrowned, okay? Now, if you decide to put a 12-inch, a 14-inch, a 13-inch, a 24-inch, an 18-inch, you are going to be blowing well over 500 feet per second with these current mods that I've listed. Okay, so if you want to keep your toy under 500, you might want to consider even leaving that um, 1377 transfer port alone uh, if you're going to put on, say, a 14 inch or longer barrel. Make sure you have a chronograph though, because a chronograph is going to tell you exactly what the speed of your gun is running with basically one of the lightest lead pellets, which is 14.3 grain and 22. Um, so, Crossman gun, Crossman ammo, and I'm pretty sure the, the lightest pellet that they do is actually 14.3 um, when it comes to their 22s. But um, anyhow, that's what we've got for you guys. I'm flipping happy. Um, and like I said, to get your hands on the 1377 transfer port um, in Canada, you are going to have to buy a 1377 and pull that transfer port out if you're going to be doing this to uh, like a 2240 or whatever, okay? Um, that's the only way you can get those transfer ports. Um, but that worked out perfect. One eighth of an inch drilled in, you know, that, that did the ticket. Just, you know, so now I've got some spare parts and I'm going to go build another gun out of my spare parts and see what we can come up with for another kind of unique pistol. i got a pump-up gun that I've been um, taking parts back and forth from, so we'll see what I get done with it. Um, in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching, and um, we'll catch you guys in the next one, eh? Right? Okay, stay tuned. we got a really cool uh, series of videos coming in the next little bit. See ya.